which surpasses all other Vedic scriptures due to its transcendental qualities. It is transcendental to all mundane activities and mundane knowledge. In this sloka it is stated that Srimad Bhagavatam is not only a superior literature, but that it is the ripened fruit of all Vedic literatures. In other words, it is the cream of all Vedic knowledge. Considering this patient and submissive potential, with great respect and one should receive the message and lessons imparted by the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Vedas are compared to the desire tree because they contain all things knowable by man. They deal with mundane necessities as well as spiritual realization. Yes, when we say that, we will find both the knowledge. Because the living entity, anyone, who has come to this material world, the cause is that he wanted to enjoy imitating Krishna. Just like it is practical experience, if we are associated with some big man and <clears throat> he is very opulent, naturally a desire come uh, if I could become an important man like him. So that is uh, possible. So as soon as a living entity thinks like that, that he can also enjoy like Krishna, then he falls down and he is given the chance of lording over this material nature. But to help him, the Vedic knowledge is there. The Vedic knowledge gives him the chance of enjoying this material world under some principle so that someday he may again come back to home, back to God. This is the Vedic literature. Uh, the chance is given because he wanted to enjoy. Uh, just like, for example, one wants to enjoy a sex life. Yes, Vedic knowledge, Vedic scripture says, yes, just enjoy in married life, not like cats and dogs. This is the difference. Uh, <coughs> so, without Vedic injunction, if one wants to enjoy by whims, then he will be more and more entangled. But if he follows the Vedic injunction, just like what is the difference between sex life as married man and woman and without? So far sex life is concerned, there is no difference. But the restriction and the rules and regulation will not make him mad after sex life. There is. Just like if anyone wants to eat meat, these are natural tendencies. So Veda says, yes, you can eat meat, but by uh, offering sacrifice uh, or uh, just uh, offer a sacrifice before the goddess of uh, goddess Kali. In this way, actually it wants to restrict, but one who is <coughs> obstinate, he wants to enjoy. He is given some Vedic direction. You enjoy like this. Uh, for example, another example can be given. Just like uh, the drunkards. The drunkards are given uh, <coughs> concession. There are liquor shop. The government gives some license to a person that you can sell liquor to the drunkards. But this uh, liquor is not available in every shop. Uh, there is a particular shop 
One has to purchase liquor from that particular shop. That means government is discouraging, but one who is obstinate to give him some facility, this particular shop is established. Uh, <coughs> Similarly, when there is allowance for sex life or drinking or meat eating or even gambling, that is not encouraging. That is minimizing the tendency under discipline. But so far we are concerned, we are above this discipline. A Vaishnava is transcendental. He hasn't got to train under this discipline because he takes shelter of Krishna directly. He is given immediately all protection. Krishna says, I shall give you all protection from sinful life. Therefore, uh, it is practical experience in USA, the government is spending millions of dollars for stopping this uh, intoxication habit among the younger generation. <coughs> but uh, the wonderful thing is they inquire also from us, but as soon as they come to our movement, immediately gives us. Uh, why? Uh, that is the special uh, prerogative of Krishna consciousness. Just shasti bhakti bhagavat akinchana sarvai ganai tattva samasate sura. If one becomes Krishna conscious, then all the good qualities of the demigods will automatically manifest it. Harabha bhakta sukhato mahat guna manorapena sato dhavata bhai. On the contrary, those who are not Krishna conscious, they have no good qualities. Rāva Bhakta, they are simply hovering on the mental platform and therefore they fall down. <coughs> the Vedas contain regulated principles of knowledge covering social, political, religious, economic, military, medicinal, chemical, physical and metaphysical subject matter and all that may be necessary to keep the body and soul there together. Actually, Veda, there is direction how to uh, prepare my chemical process gold. That is also there. Uh, gold, there is, there is suggestion that you mix three metals, namely nickel, copper and market, you will get gold. Uh, this direction is there, and many uh, person, saintly person, yogi, they know how to prepare it, and they do it. So in that way, they meet their expenditure. They prepare gold, uh, the chemical knowledge. Wow. Above and beyond all this are specific directions for spiritual realization. Regulated knowledge involves a gradual raising of the living entity to the spiritual platform, and the highest spiritual realization is to know that the Personality of Godhead is the reservoir of all spiritual tastes or uh, rasas. This is called pravitti and nivitti. Pravitti means the living entity has come here to enjoy this material world. This is called pravitti. And the other side is nivitti. Uh, nivitti means become detached to material life. So long he will be attached to the materialistic way of life, there is no question of liberation. He will be more and more entangled. According to his mind, he will get a, a, a particular type of body, material body, and there are 8,400,000 species of body. So as soon as one gets the body, he becomes under the laws of the material nature and uh, the material nature means under the laws, the stringent laws, threefold miserable condition that will continue. Therefore, the Vedic literature, they give us opportunity to gradually renounce. Pravitti-nesham bhūtāna nidvitteshtu mahābhalam. That is pravitti, uh, inclination. But a, a Vedic student is trained up in such a way that ultimately he becomes renounced or detached from this material universe. 
Bhagavan. Every living entity beginning from Brahma, the first born living, living being within the material world, down to the insignificant ant, desires to relish some sort of taste derived from sense perceptions. These sensual pleasures are technically called rasas. And, but as you know it, <coughs> they uh, love very much intoxicants, and therefore they are after sugar. Sugar has got uh, properties, intoxication. Wine is made from sugar, from molasses. Uh, so they add, they want to be very much intoxicated. So this intoxication is not only in the human society, in the animal society, in bird society, in beast society. Luki bhavyam ishamadva siva nityastu jantu nahi tattva chodana. Bhavaya, sex, intercourse, bhavaya, amisha, meat eating, madva seva, intoxication. They are there everywhere, uh, not only in human society. This is the pravritti. Now, the actual knowledge, actual education means to detach them, not to increase them. Uh, that the present moment the civilization is they are increasing the in desire. Everyone has got this desire, but that is called civilization. Uh, eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy. You know, the human life is meant for being trained up uh, to be detached, just like we are training our students. Uh, they are not, uh, uh, if not cent percent, uh, uh, major portion major percentage, they are detached. Uh, that is perfection. Gradually detached. It's like if you have got fever, 105 degree, you should not increase it. You should decrease it. Uh, if you increase your oh, fever, is very nice thing. Let us increase it. Then death. As soon as it is 107 degrees, then death. death. So this material civilization is like fever. Uh, we should not increase it. Neither we shall decrease it to such an extent that we shall die. Uh, just like fever. Fever, 105, 107 degree, 12, 6 degree, 5 degree, reduce it. Reduce, 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 but you, it must stay at 100, uh, not 100, 98 degrees. Uh, if you reduce 98 degree, 97, that is also not good. Uh, similarly, our program is not to increase to the death point, neither to decrease it to the death point. Yuktaharu uh, viharastu. We don't say, don't eat. Eat. But don't eat more or don't eat less. That is our program. We don't say, don't eat. Uh, don't prohibit anything. We don't say no sex life. Yeah, yes. Uh, no, we don't say no. Yes, sex life, marriage sex life, regulated sex life. Uh, so everything should be regulated. That is this time. That is recommended in the Bhagavad Gita. Yuktaharo viharascha yoga bhavati siddhita. We are executing yoga. So yuktaha. And Rupa Goswami also says, uh, uh, this is called bisha, material enjoyment. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. This is called bisha. Uh, so one has to give up this bisha. Nartam Das Thakur says, Bishaya chariya serao se mojiya muke bolo hori hori. Unless you are detached from the Bisha, uh, Bisha is there, even in bird's life, beast life. Bisha or Sarvatosa. So, uh, in the beginning, we cannot give up this Bisha, all of a sudden. But we should be trained now not to be attached to the Bisha. Anasaktasya Bishayan. Jatharam. As well. We must eat. Uh, we must eat to the point that we may not die of starvation. 
Not that there is nice food. Oh, let me eat. Then I cannot digest and I go three times to the WG. Not like that. Alas, of course. One should be unattached. That I, I have to eat something for maintaining both the body and soul together. Not that uh, to the excess. Anasattasya vishaya jatharam mukhajantati. If one uh, makes his life in that regulated way, then he is as good as Anasattasya uh, vishaya jatharam mukhajantati. Nidbandi Krishna. And the vishaya enjoyment should be uh, in connection with Krishna. Just like we, we eat and others also eat. But we eat in relationship with Krishna. Krishna has eaten and we take the prasad. In this way we have to make progress in spiritual life. <coughs> Such rasas are of different varieties. In the revealed scriptures the following twelve varieties of rasas are enumerated. One, Rodra, anger. Two, Adbhuta, wonder. Three, Sringara, conjugal love. Four, Hasya, comedy. Five, Vira, chivalry. Six, Daya, mercy. Seven, Dasya, servitorship. Eight, Sakya, fraternity. Nine, Payanaka, horror. Ten, Vibhatsa, shock. Eleven, Shanta, neutrality. Twelve, Vatsalya, parenthood. The sum total of all these rasas is called affection or love. Primarily such signs of love are manifested in adoration, service, friendship, eternal affection, and conjugal love. And when these five are absent, lo love is present indirectly in anger, wonder, comedy, chivalry, fear, shock, and so on. For example, when a man is in love with a woman, the rasa is called conjugal love. But when such love affairs are disturbed, there may be wonder, anger, shock, or even horror. Sometimes love affairs between two persons culminate in ghastly murder scenes. Such rasas are displayed between man and man and between animal and animal. There is no possibility of an exchange of rasa between an, a man and an animal, or between a man and, and any other species of living beings within the material world. The rasas are exchanged between members of the same species. But as far as the spirit souls are concerned, we have seen sometimes the pigeons fighting. Ah, but a pigeon and crow does not fight. A pigeon and pigeon fight. Ah. So uh, this is also another indirect way of love. You'll, you'll see the pigeons, they will fight. And again, sit down in the assembly of the pigeons. Not that the pigeon is going to the assembly of crows. The rasas are exchanged between members of the same species. But as far as the spirit souls are concerned, they are one qualitatively with the Supreme Lord. Therefore the rasas were originally exchanged between the spiritual living being and the spiritual whole, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The spiritual exchange, or rasa, is fully exhibited in spiritual existence between the living beings and the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is therefore described in the Shruti mantras, Vedic hymns, as the fountainhead of all rasas. When one associates with the Supreme Lord and exchanges one's constitutional rasa with the Lord, then, then the living being is actually happy. These Shruti mantras indicate that every living being has its constitutional position which is endowed with a particular type of rasa which is to be exchanged with the personality of Godhead. In the liberated condition only, this primary rasa is experienced in full. In the material existence, the rasa is experienced in the perverted form, which is temporary, and thus the rasas of the material world are exhibited in the material form of rodra, anger, and so on. Therefore, one who attains full knowledge of these different rasas, which are the basic principles of activities, can understand the false representations of the original rasas 
which are reflected in the material world. The learned scholar seeks to relish the real rasa in the spiritual form. In the beginning, he desires to become one with the Supreme. Thus, intelligent transcendentalists cannot go beyond this conception of becoming one with the spirit whole without knowing of the different rasas. In this shloka, it is definitely stated that spiritual rasa, which is relished even in the liberated stage, can be experienced in the literature of the can be experienced in the literature of the Srimad Bhagavatam due to its being the ripened fruit of all, Vedic liter- of all Vedic knowledge. By submissively hearing this transcendental literature, one can attain the full pleasure of the heart's desire. But one must be very careful to hear the message from the right source. Srimad Bhagavatam is exactly received from the right source. It was brought by Narada Muni from the spiritual world and given to his disciple Shivyas Deva. The latter in turn delivered the message to his son, Srila Shukadeva Goswami, and Srila Shukadeva Goswami delivered the message to Maharaj Parikit just seven days before the king's death. Srila Shukadeva Goswami was a liberated soul from his very birth. He was liberated even in the womb of his mother, and he did not undergo any sort of spiritual training after his birth. At birth, no one is qualified neither in the mundane nor the spiritual sense. But Sri Shukadeva Goswami, due to his being a perfectly liberated soul, did not have to undergo an, an evolutionary process for spiritual realization. Yet despite his being a completely liberated person, situated in the transcendental position above the three material modes, he was attracted to this transcendental rasa of the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is adored by liberated souls who sing Vedic hymns. The Supreme Lord's pastimes are more attracted to liberated souls than to mundane people. He is of necessity not impersonal, because it is only possible to carry on transcendental rasa with a person. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, the transcendental pastimes of the Lord are narrated, and the narration is systematically depicted by Srila Shukadeva Goswami. Thus, the subject matter is appealing to all classes of persons, including those who seek liberation and those who seek to become one with the Supreme Whole. In Sanskrit, the parrot is also known as shuka. When a ripened fruit is cut by the red beaks of such birds, its sweet flavor is enhanced. The Vedic fruit, which is mature and ripe in knowledge, is spoken through the lips of Srila Shukadeva Goswami, who is compared to the parrot, not for his ability to recite the Bhagavatam exactly as he heard it from his learned father, but for his ability to present the work in a manner that would appeal to all classes of men. The subject matter is so presented <coughs> through the lips of Srila Shukadeva Goswami that any sincere listener that hears submissively can at once relish transcendental tastes which are distinct from the perverted tastes of the material world. The ripened fruit is not dropped all of a sudden from the highest planet of Krishna Loka. Rather, it has come down carefully through the chain of disciplic succession without change or disturbance. Foolish people who are not in the transcendental disciplic succession commit great blunders by trying to understand the highest transcendental rasa, known as the rasa dance, without following the footsteps of Shukadeva Goswami, who presents this fruit very carefully by stages of transcendental realization. One should be intelligent to know the position of Srimad Bhagavatam by considering personalities like Shukadeva Goswami, who deals with the subject so carefully. This process of disciplic succession of the Bhagavata school suggests that in the future also, Srimad Bhagavatam has to be understood from a person who is factually a representative of Srila Shukadeva Goswami, a professional man who makes a business out of reciting the Bhagavatam illegally, is certainly not a representative of Shukadeva Goswami. Such a man's business is only to earn his livelihood. Therefore, one should refrain from hearing the lectures of such professional men. Such men usually go to the most confidential part of the literature without undergoing the gradual process of understanding this grave subject. In India, there is a class. Uh, They are professional Bhagavad reciters. They make contracts that uh, he shall recite Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, uh, finish within a week, and he should be rewarded. Uh, these things are not recommended in the authoritative scripture. Uh, 
children, we should follow the footsteps of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. He is explaining Srimad Bhagavatam from the very beginning. Janma Adasajataha. Try to understand the philosophy of Bhagavat. Then gradually, when you are accustomed to understand what is Krishna, then go to the tenth canto where wherein Krishna's Rasa dance is described. Without reading in the beginning what is Krishna, uh, if we all of a sudden jump over to understand the uh, Rasa dance, uh, that is a very natural tendency. No, we should not go like that. First of all, try to understand what is Krishna. To understand Krishna is very typical subject matter. But by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, uh, we can understand little about Krishna. And then gradually, uh, of course, the ultimate goal is to enter into the pastimes of Lord Krishna, but uh, not by speculation or by material uh, misconception. Gradually. Uh, Pradud bhave bhavit krama. There is a chronological way, a gradual process. Adu sadhya. First of all, sadhya. Faith. Uh, Krishna consciousness is very good. This is faith. Adu uh, sadhya. Tatu sadhu sangha. Then, to increase that faith, we should mix with persons who are actually developing or cultivating Krishna concept. That is called sadhusam. Adhu saddha tatusam. Tata bhajana kriya. Then after uh, mixing, after associating with the devotees, naturally one becomes, uh, I will say, eager to be initiated how to execute devotional service. That is called initiation. Bhajana kriya. And if he is properly initiated, and if he executes the order of the spiritual master, regulative principles, then anarthani vittishya, then things which are not wanted in our life, that becomes vanquished. Just like nobody will die uh, without sex life. Nobody will die without meat eating. Nobody will die uh, without uh, intoxication. Nobody will die without playing gambling. These are Learn by uh, association only. By bad association, we learn how to drink, how to smoke. Similarly, by good association, we can give up drinking and smoking. So this is called anartha. Anartha means uh, which there is no gain, simply loss. Practically, you can see, so a man who has learned to smoke is spending uh, one pound on like that daily for smoking. At least we save that money. Uh, we don't smoke. So anartha, uh, there is no necessity is to be of learn. So anartha nivitishyat, if one is actually initiated and follows the rules and regulation, he will no more be attached with this unwanted thing. Then anartha dhatu nishtha, then firm faith. By these four processes, the faith becomes firm. Uh, Tatu nishta, tatu ruchi. Ruchi means taste. Uh, it's like you are sitting here, unless you have got some taste to understand Krishna consciousness, you could not sit down. Tatu ruchi. Tatu nishta, tatu ruchi, tatha shakti. Then attachment. Instead of being attached to this material enjoyment, one becomes attached to Krishna consciousness. In this way, tatu bhava, then ecstasy, then love. So when you come to the platform of love of Krishna by this process, at that time if we try to understand Krishna's rasa dance, that will be very relevant. Before that, if we try to understand, the effect will be, we shall consider Krishna as a, a, a young boy of this material world, and the gopis are young girls, and they are enjoying. Uh, so let me imitate also and 
I become Krishna, I become gopis. That is it. Dear friend, don't do that. First of all, try to understand Krishna. Then go to read the Rasa down. Hmm. <clears throat> they usually plunge into the subject matter of the Rasa dance, which is misunderstood by the... These professional leaders, they won't read. Just like we are reading the philosophical side. They won't go. People are not interested. The philosophical. They immediately jump over the Rasa dance. And they think, oh, Krishna is enjoying with the gopis. Just like we read some novel, eh? one boy is enjoying with another girl. They take it like you see. So uh, uh, that is degradation. Avaishnava mukhati na puto hari katha amritam. Sarvanam na kartabha. That for Sanatana Goswami has a word that one who is not actually Vaishnava realize so. Oh, this Vaishnava uh, philosophy. One should not hear from always no mukhat ginna puta hari katha. Sravanam nakar. Don't hear. Uh, so, actually, uh, this Bhagavad Sapta is going on in India, uh, and village to village. But you see, the effect is that they are not Krishna conscious. They are not as good Krishna conscious as you have become. Because they take it as, uh, as a matter of um, some re- uh, refreshment. Uh, no. Uh, it should be taken very seriously and should be heard from the de- right source. Then you will get the result. Hmm. Some, of them, which is, some of them take this to be immoral while others try to cover it up by their own stupid interpretation. Yeah, sometimes they say, oh, Krishna is so immoral. Yes, that will be the effect. Uh, Krishna uh, is enjoying with others' wives and other sisters like that. They take that. They do it. We have to sometimes explain. They question. Uh, even even uh, Parikhid Maharaj question. Parikhid Maharaj question, not that he was ignorant. He questioned this fact from Sukhdev Goswami, and it was answered so that others may understand that Krishna's pastime is not immoral. That is the highest sublime spiritual uh, pastime. Mm. They have no desire to follow in the footsteps of Srila Shukadeva Goswami. One should conclude, therefore, that the serious student of the rasa should receive the message of Bhagavatam in the chain of disciplic succession from Śrīla Śrukadeva Goswāmī, who describes the Bhagavatam from its very beginning, and not whimsically, to satisfy the mundaner who has very little knowledge in transcendental science. Śrīmad Bhagavatam is so carefully presented that a sincere and serious person can at once enjoy the ripened fruit of Vedic knowledge simply by drinking the nectarian juice through the mouth of Śrukadeva Goswāmī or his bona fide representative. 